I've clicked onto the Global Tropical Overview for November the 25th, 26th in the Eastern Hemisphere, 2023, as is always the case in these videos. Let's express your mind alone, and we're making decisions ahead of any tropical cyclones, look at your local weather office, local emergency management, and local tropical cyclone warning center. Well, it's been a while since I've made a video. We haven't really had much going on in the tropics over the past several days. We had potential for an Atlantic system to form. That did not end up forming, and we have a tropical storm currently in the Pacific, but that is expected to stay out to sea, and that is going to really not stay for more than a day more, at least on the current, on the current forecast from the National Hurricane Center, so we're not going to be talking about that. But we do have something of concern in the Bay of Bengal, and we are looking, we've seen signals over the past several days of models trying to form something in the Bay of Bengal, and of course when you're looking at something more far out you get a little weary of it but you pay attention to it to see if the models are consistent on it and we have seen a lot of consistency and it does look like eventually something is likely to form in the bay of Bengal, and there might be a chance of it becoming a stronger tropical cyclone now as for right now the system is very disorganized what you're looking at on your screen is infest 99w uh the joint typhoon warning center designated it on the western pacific side is their I think there was a small chance that it could develop on this side of the uh, continent, but the system is not really getting too well organized. You can see it's right off the coastline of Malaysia, and the system will be soon crossing Malaysia into the Bay of Bengal. I'd imagine when it gets into the Bay of Bengal, we'll get a new designation for it. I'm not exactly sure what the next invest designation is for uh, the Bay of Bengal, but you'll hear it from me when I make a video on it. Now, while it doesn't look too good right now, it doesn't really matter as we would still see the system get disrupted as it goes over Malaysia. Uh, but the forecast is that the system will be tracking west, like I said, into the Bay of Bengal. What we've got is we have broad trough stretching from south of India over to 99W. So you can see a lot of general westerly winds towards the equator and easterly winds associated with the natural trade winds of Earth here and this denotes the general boundary of the trough and note that we have a couple lobes of increased vorticity along this trough we have one here in the southern bay of Bengal, and we have one here off the coastline of malaysia associated with 99w we'll have to pay attention to this first one here as there have been some runs that have tried to show this amplifying a little bit more and similar to our last system in the Bay of Bengal, which I forget the name of, I think it was Tropical Cyclone 7B. I, I believe it did get a name, but I can't remember it. We had an instance where another lobe of low pressure had formed, and it actually helped keep that system at bay from development right up until it got towards the coastline of India and Bangladesh. Right now, the models are not too confident on that scenario occurring like they were with 7B, but it is something to pay attention to and some to keep in mind as we go through these runs. Now, you'll see over time, if I go back to the beginning of this, you'll see that compared to the western end of this trough, 99W is a little bit further north. And what's happening is with the trade winds, this part of the trough is being pushed into the Bay of Bengal. So we're going to see this move from more of a horizontal uh, look, from more of a west to east uh, propagation more to southwest to northeast across the Bay of Bengal. And what this is going to do is it's going to help amplify the trough eventually to where we get a tropical cyclone forming. So you can see now the trough is generally like this. And on the northern end of this, we are getting the formation of a tropical cyclone on the model. And the GFS is not alone in this idea. Here's a European, and you can see the general same uh, look. We have a trough stretched out here here's 99w here's an area of increased vorticity and you can see as it moves to the bay of bengal it doesn't amplify as much with the trough it looks like on the european we just have an, the 99w more amplify here uh, but you still have this general trough and you can see that over time we have this general axis generally northwest to north or sorry southwest to northeast and we do have a tropical cyclone there on the model before five days on the european which when the european shows that alongside the gfs you typically do get you know to pay more attention to that and especially now over the past day we've seen the european become more confident in this idea of the storm forming alongside the gfs 
I'd say right now odds are pretty significant. We do have other models like the Canadian as well on board with this. This seems to be, you know, one of the more higher confidence formations that we've seen in the past few months. And uh, especially over the past month with all the Atlantic systems that we've thought were going to form but did not form, this one seems pretty high, uh, I'd, I'd say, chance to develop over the coming days. And the Indian Meteorological Department do agree they have a high chance of the system developing. And that's exactly what I would give it right now based on current guidance. Now, what is it going to do once it gets to the Bay of Bengal and once it forms? That, unfortunately, is not all set in stone. Here's a 500 millibar flow chart from the GFS. And you can see, I'm going to go to the beginning here, the, the general pattern laid out here. 99W is here. We have a general ridge of high pressure across portions of Asia. Central Asia, that is. And you can see this trough moving out of the Middle East. What's going to happen is this trough is going to propagate eastwards and it's going to move into central India. And as 99W moves into the central Bay of Bengal and eventually forms on the GFS, the system is going to be strong enough to be picked up by this trough and move north. This is scenario one, I'd say for the storm and you can see this play out the trough is there over northern india and our storm develops it strengthens and then moves further north into portions of myanmar india and bangladesh where exactly that would end up not too sure this track is still very uncertain and this is only one scenario here on guidance on the europeans end and i'll go back to the beginning you can see the same general pattern ridge here over asia trough here exiting uh, the Middle East, and that trough is going to move into portions of northern India. But the difference here, there are two differences as we get towards five days. One, this trough is weaker on the European. Alongside that, the storm overall is weaker on the European compared to the GFS. If I go to the same time on the GFS, it looks like that one there, you can see it's not you know, the biggest difference in the world, but it is a little bit stronger on the GFS. And this is important because if we look at a sounding of the wind profile throughout the troposphere, you can see in the low levels, we've got westerly winds. So, that, so in the low levels, the winds are trying to push a storm towards eastern India. Aloft of that into the mid levels, we've got westerly winds. So if you have a storm that's weaker, like the European, that feels only up to the mid levels, a lot of these forces are going to cancel out and you're actually just going to get the storm sitting in one place in the Bay of Bengal. Rather, if you get a stronger storm like you see on the GFS, it's going to start to feel more of this flow higher in the troposphere. And you can see that we have more stronger southerly flow. So while you do have, you know, some westerly and easterly winds below this, a lot of these forces end up canceling each other out. So you get a mean flow out of the south so the storm starts to come north towards portions of bangladesh india and myanmar and you can see this on the european how the storm will just sit there for several days at a time you can see it comes into the eastern and central bay of bengal and it just sits there it does not move too much eventually the trough does move out though you can see on the gfs as i go to the 500 millibar plot the trough does move out with the storm this happens on the European as well, but not with the storm. The storm is just so far south and so weak, it does not feel this flow from this trough. So eventually, we get a little bit more ridging building up north, and the system ends up tracking westwards towards India. And after this point, we're past seven days, so exactly where the storm tracks is a completely another story. Could it recurve and parallel the coastline of India? That's a scenario the European has gone into. Or could it just come right into Eastern India? That's also another scenario that we've seen in the European. There's a lot of uncertainty here. Now, what is certain is the environment will likely be favorable for at least some form of intensification. This is a 200 millibar flow chart from the GFS, and you can see as the system is in the central Bay of Bengal, we have this large jet streak over southern Asia. And as the storm develops, its outflow moves north to meet this outflow jet. And you can see the environment gets very favorable. There's also some southerly flow here expanding towards the equator. That is also a favorable sign for a tropical cyclone. So if the GFS scenario does occur, we could be looking at, you know, something that could be intensifying on its way north towards 
uh, these areas along the coastline of Myanmar, Bangladesh, and India. Now, the European, despite missing the trough and coming west, it does still have a favorable environment. Now, it is missing the equatorward outflow channel, but you can see the outflow from this storm moving north to meet this enhanced flow over northern India and getting into the Himalayas in portions of Central Asia. So this is a bit of a complex forecast. There's a lot of uncertainty here. And the most important thing to do along the coastlines of India, Bangladesh, and Myanmar is to stay tuned to your local weather office and the Indian Meteorological Department. Uh, I'm going to leave a link to as many offices as I can find in the description below. And I'll also have more videos ahead in time as the system does develop, as it does look like we may have you know, the potential for a significant storm here. But again, very uncertain on what this storm may do. So make sure you stay tuned to uh, your local weather office and official Tropical Cyclone Warning Center. But other than that, the tropics are fairly quiet across the world. There is some potential of something next week in the South Pacific, uh, but we'll talk about that when we get there. Uh, but for now, the tropics are quiet, and that's all I've got for Invest99W. Uh, so that's it for now. Thanks for watching.